Once you were old enough what were the dark family secrets you were finally let in on? Got a Facebook message from one guy asking if I was related to my dad. Since it is not a common last name, I thought he was a fan of his work. Because I was in college at the time and the guy was about the same age as me. And that's how I found out my dad slept around. And that I had a half brother the same age as me. Are you guys friends now? Number. There are nice stories I had a co-worker reunite with her birth family. And they got along great. But this is more of a. Worst case scenario. I. Who had greatly admired my dad up until that morning. Gave quite the panicked anxious call to him about this new information. He told me the guy and his mom were psychos and I should not talk to them. I asked him if it was true and was given a not reassuring maybe. The guy was probably perfectly nice and wanted to get to know me and stuff. But I was having an incredibly difficult time processing all of this. He had also contacted my younger full biological brother again. Rare last name. I blocked the new half brother because I could not deal with it. My dad had also told us not to tell our mom about it. So suddenly the secret was our burden to bear. And I know for sure it tore me apart for the next 8 years or so. I finally caved and told my mom. And she said she already knew. I hope it was my younger biological brother who had told her. Because I still consider this whole ordeal a contributing factor in his suicide. So. I'm the a-hole here. But I just really do not want to have anything to do with the guy. We never met. Never knew each other. And while he really did not do anything wrong, I just associate him with grief. Wow. That s heartbreaking. You can t blame yourself though. Although I am sure you've already heard that a million times. Stay strong. My grandfather killed his youngest brother to get out of going to Vietnam. B. His brother and two of their friends had their numbers called in the draft for Vietnam. They didn't he want to go. Obviously. But they didn't he come from money and all work to support their families. If they got arrested they'd he lose their jobs and their families would lose their income. So they decided on a different plan to get out of going. They would drive to get their medical checks together. And on the way there they would drive the car into a tree. The plan was to get too injured to get sent to war. But not so injured as to be permanently crippled. And it had to look like an accident so nobody got arrested. This was in country western Australia. So they were all going to say they swerved to miss a kangaroo and hit the tree. My grandfather was driving. His friend was in the passenger seat and the other two were in the back. His brother was behind the passenger seat. They hit the tree doing about 40 kilometers per hour enough to be serious. A broken leg for my grandfather, a broken arm for the guy behind him, and broken ribs all around. They definitely weren't going to war. The problem was that for maximum impact, and because this was rural Australia in the 60s, they weren't wearing seatbelts. And nobody found them, or their car for an hour or so. And nobody considered internal injuries in this plan. And my grandfather's brother bled to death from a ruptured spleen in the back seat. He was dead, before they got to a hospital. My grandfather never forgave himself. And he never talked about it. My grandma was the only one he ever told. As far as we know. And she didn't he tell my mother and I until long after his death. We found a small box in their bedroom when we were cleaning out the house after she died last year. It had a clipping from the local newspaper at the time about the accident. It said that they had swerved to miss a roo and called it a tragedy. I don't think my mother told any of her siblings. So technically this is still the family secret. I guess now you re all in on it. It was a tragedy that they were put into such a position where they had to come up with such a plan to avoid being made cannon fodder. Poor things. Younger brother may have been doomed from the moment his number was called. No matter what. Not very much a secret, but took me until I was older to understand what was happening. My mom would sometimes have us play a game called army which consisted of me, my mom, and my siblings army crawling around our apartment kind of a hide and seek style game. She would yell hit the deck randomly and we would all drop and find a hiding spot. We would giggle and giggle while my mom army crawled around looking for us. We loved the game so much. I realized a few years ago while retelling the story that we lived in a really terrible neighborhood and she would yell it out when she heard gunshots outside the building. I am assuming she was worried about stray bullets 
Edit I shared everyone's amazing comments with my mom. And she shed. A tear. She feels very appreciated on International Woman's Day today. Your mom is a ducking G. War vet. Single mom of three. Worked her way up in life from bartending to union plumber foreman to owning her own gunsmithing shop with my stepdad. She is a strong woman. I admire your mother greatly. My grandfather got out of serving in Vietnam by robbing farmers yes and going to jail for years. Wow. Mine got out of it by telling the navy that he could type. So he remained stateside and typed reports or something for his unit. He said he was one hell of a two fingered typist. My dad could type and was strongly encouraged to become a clerk typist. Typist. Hell. I want to be a fighting man. Was his reply. And that s how he ended up on Omaha Beach. HR. D Day. He later said he should have been a typist after all. Well. If he later said anything. Praise him for making it out of that. When I was about 10 my cousin and his dad died. I always thought it was an accident and on the same day. When I was old enough I was told that his dad actually committed suicide and my cousin followed him couple months later. Truly devastated me, although I didn't he know them well. Edit thank you for the warm words and also for sharing your similar stories with me. I varied all the replies. My grief is still there because I understand that with professional help both would maybe still be here today. It just wasn't he common to seek help back then. I hope all of you are well. I'm so sorry. I know of a similar story. When I was a senior in high school 2006, 2007 one of my classmates lost her dad to suicide. Over winter break. Poor girl was so close to him. And it took her a couple of months to feel mentally okay enough to come back to school. She had just gotten back into a regular school routine when one day she was pulled out of class her older brother had committed suicide. That was it for her. And she finished her schoolwork at home for the rest of the year. Obviously it was beyond devastating for her, her older sister, and their mother. And it broke our hearts that, while the rest of us were doing prom, prepping for graduation and college, etc. She was at home wrestling with deep grief. From what I can tell on Facebook, they are all doing well today. But man, I cannot imagine what it was like to be the people most directly affected by that situation. That happened to me, but with a best friend. She wrote I am done on Facebook, and then shot herself in her front yard and died right there. She had a son who was in his last year of high school at the time. At 22 he shot himself in the head and died. Very devastating for all. I still have no words to explain why they made those choices. It is shown that previous suicide attempts in the family is a risk factor for future suicide. My father met my mother in the Philippines when he was stationed there in the Navy. He married her there and conceived me. He went away to finish his tour of duty. My mother moved to America when she was a month away from giving birth to me. She moved in with relatives in Texas. My father's tour ended while he was in Hawaii. He met a woman there and called my mom in America, asking for a divorce. He wanted to take back his recent marriage to her with a kid on the way because he had a hot one night stand. My mother was already scared. Being in a new country, not knowing much English. Add to this that she was pregnant, about to give birth, and her husband was dumping her. My Texan uncle got on a plane to Hawaii, prepared to kick my father's butt. He somehow talked my father into being a man and taking responsibility for his wife and child. The fact that the fling dumped his bit surely helped. He was back by the time I was born. I learned all this when I was 11. Around the time my parents got divorced. It was only the first of countless dark family secrets I would come to learn during my teenage years. This might be the first story I read here where the uncle is the good guy in the teller's point of view. That my cousin was actually my half brother. Mom got pregnant in college and my aunt and uncle adopted him. And that my dad was not my biological father. Mom and dad got divorced. She got pregnant by another man. And my dad was not able to have kids of his own. So they got remarried and he raised me as his own. There are two posts here about a cousin that is also a half brother. And if you put the two together, what do you get? A full brother. My uncle is believed to have murdered two Australian police officers in the late 80s. Holy shit. Walsh Street. Yep. 
Peter McEvoy. I met Peter at an RSL club I worked at in Newcastle and had quite a few interactions with him. He was playing the poke is the first time I met him and I saw his surname on his member's card when I went over for a payout and said I had friends that were McEvoy's and maybe he was related and he said he was estranged from his family because he was accused of doing something very bad that he did not do. I was like oh I'm okay. Then I googled him. When I was young I thought it was really nice that my nana lived with my aunt and her family since she was getting on a bit and it meant she was looked after and there were always people around aunt has 6 kids. Occasionally aunt would gripe about being the one looking after nana since aunt is also one of many kids and being young I sympathized but given they all spent loads of time with nana too did not think it was a big deal you do not think about financial responsibility when you are young I think. Just social and caring. Well it turns out the reason Nana lives with aunt is because aunt and her husband convinced Nana to put the house in their name so they could look after her affairs and sold it out from under her and invested the money in a pyramid scheme so it is gone now. Because of this her siblings refuse to give aunt a penny towards looking after Nana since it is her fault Nana has no money or assets and instead pay to take Nana out all the time. Meals. Shopping. Activities so she does not go without but they let aunt struggle under the weight of nana's general living expenses aunt's kids are all independent now so they are not going to be impacted by money problems now i look back at her griping with annoyance and think what a terrible person she is my aunt and cousin did something similar to my nan nan passed with virtually nothing to her name because my cousin had been made her next of kin and controlled the bank account while allegedly receiving a carer's allowance for my aunt and aunt and the cousin that was complicit the other two cousins have nothing to do with them wound up moving to another state because they would amassed one too many debts. They ripped my folks and I off it was. Easy for me to cut them out of my life. But leaving their own mother and grandmother with nothing was beyond the pale. I'm glad your aunt siblings do the right thing by your nana. I'm sorry to hear that. It is awful what some people can do to their own family. Especially the vulnerable members. It was surreal as a kid. She would have a moan and no one would react. It was like she had not spoken. I thought they were judging her for complaining. Or maybe felt guilty. But did not want to help her. Turns out they had decided not to keep conflicting with her over it for Nana's sake as it upset her. If they argued over it. Since it is done now and instead stonewalled anything she mentioned that was about. Or as a result of her actions. I guess part of that was not mentioning it to the next generation. I found out from someone who married in and then divorced back out of the family, who I'm on very good terms with and even then, only because I asked what they thought of the weird situation. My grandmother tried to murder my grandfather when she got sick of him beating the shit out of her every day. She swung an axe at him and he blocked it with his hand and lost his thumb. She left him before I was born. I do not at all wish. To make light of an obviously terrible ongoing domestic violence situation my grandmother faced a similar scenario. I'm very sorry, but the appearance of the axe makes it poetry. Good on her. I wish every victim could feel that strength. Not so much let in on, as we found out by accident, but apparently my dad's first love and him got into a serious car crash when he was 25 and she died. He lived with her father 4 years after her death. He still occasionally comes to visit my dad. Even 30 years later. We were always told he was a mentor. Until my sister pressed my mom on the subject. One of my sister S is even named after the girl. That died middle name. And we never even knew about her until last year. None of us have ever brought it up with him. My friend was engaged to his first love in their early 20s. When she passed from cancer. 10 years later. He got married to an amazing woman who honored his late fianc in their wedding ceremony. Not a dry eye in the place. Oh man that's awesome and heartbreaking all in one. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe for more videos.